Well, hello loves. Happy Sunday to you. It's Sean Petit. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to pop in real quick before I dived in, dive into this, into creating, um, and just kind of share my inspiration behind the piece. So um, I did a video a while back showing how I kind of get my inspiration. I won't go into that, but this is the this is the inspiration. This color just really spoke to me, and it kind of went really well with my quote and the whole thing. So this is my inspiration, and I'm going to be working from these colors. And what I've done is I've gone in and pulled from my stash, which is, I just have to, some ridiculous amounts of paper, but um, I'm using a lot, and I wanted to just explain to you what I'm using. I'm using, these are walnut ink stained tissue papers, and this has got a, like a salt effect to it. Um, these are tissue papers that I had used for jelly printing. Um, napkins. Um, the, this is jelly printing. This is, but this is parchment paper. So I'm using a lot of very transparent papers, but lots of different texture. And I wanted to get a lot of different texture in here, and really kind of do this a little bit abstract, keeping with that rich emerald kind of turquoise color. Um, and I'll bring some of that back in too. But all of these are. Um, most of them are tissue paper or parchment paper or napkins. This is tissue paper that I just stenciled over with my archival ink. And um, all of these actually are part of workshops that I did. So um, these are like from the abstract um, journey workshop and these are from the tissue paper workshop. So um, then I'm going to throw in maybe some palette paper. I save almost all of my palette papers. Look at how gorgeous that these colors are. But take in some of that color as well. That's my plan anyway. How it will actually go, you never quite know. This was a piece that I actually um, did on Yupo that I did for um, a design team project. Um, so I'm going to kind of cut these up and create some abstract um, and I'm working on an, a 12 by 12 MDF board. I'm going to introduce into the piece some, um, this is turquoise thalo, um, golden high flow, and this is a Liquitex acrylic ink, and it is um, thalo green, I believe. I'm going to mix these two together to kind of really get that deep, rich emerald color. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of red or something like that, I believe. And I'll be using some gesso and some modeling paste. I'll be using um, matte medium or gel medium because some of the papers are a little thicker. Um, when the papers are a little thicker, I use the gel medium because it sticks them down immediately. Otherwise, I use Liquitex matte medium because it's, it dries really fast and I'm all about creating fast and in the moment when the inspiration is happening. So I just wanted to kind of let you know kind of what I was doing up front and what I was using and the different types of papers because there's a lot of different types um, but um, they'll all hopefully hopefully blend together. So let's get creating. All right, so I'm going to be putting down my papers that I have pulled from my stash for the background. Um, this is just random bits of papers that I had, and I'm going to put that down with my fluid matte medium. And so now I'm taking that fluid, um, the Liquitex acrylic ink and the um, high flow, and I've mixed them together. 
and I've never done this technique before where I've just brushed it on with a dry brush through my stencil and I positively love it. I love the look. It has a watercolor feel. So the, the my imagination is obviously going wild with all of the different things that I could be using this technique for. So that's just high flow and acrylic inks um, with a dry brush through the stencil. Oh, fantastic. This is the Geo Leaves stencil. And now I am diving into all those wonderful, luscious papers. Uh, it's just one of my favorite things to do is to just gather all my goodies. And I love using the transparent papers because it allows all of the other layers to show through. There's a palette paper piece there. I mean, I'm just using everything. And... Um, Sometimes when, because I've created these um, papers on um, parchment paper and then the, um, the palette paper is parchment paper and it can crinkle quite a bit. Um, you could probably get less crinkles if you used matte gel, but I love the texture. Um, so I'm not worried about it one bit. But when you've got your tissue paper and the parchment paper and deli paper, it's just transparent and all of those layers just show through and it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I have no rhyme or reason. Um, I've pulled all the like colors that I'm trying to, you know, my inspiration from. I am placing them down that looks and feels pleasing to me and I'm working in a triangle. Um, so um, I don't really have a plan yet as to where this is going. I put that piece of tissue paper down and I got too um, strong with it and it tore. So I just peeled it up and placed it back down and just kind of tried to be in the moment and not think too hard about um, where I was placing things but just making sure that it kind of flowed and that I had even balance of colors and textures and patterns throughout the piece. So you'll see that I've got this. This is a piece of pattern paper that I stenciled on top of. And I am placing it in three different places. I'm working in that triangle. And so that keeps things balanced. Even if I don't know where it's going, it still helps in the piece coming together, working in that triangle. Now I'm coming back in and I'm going to start pulling it together and trying to make sense out of some of what I've put down. And I'm using some gesso to just kind of start the process of pushing things back and figuring out what I really want to show up. And, and um, I'm trying not to think too hard about it, but again, still trying to find where the piece is going to go. Um, I know that I'm going to have words, so I'm kind of keeping that in mind as I start to bring the layers in. I start bringing in my, my colors here, and I mix them right on the piece, that, th that um, phthalo green and the um, phthalo turquoise. Such rich, beautiful colors. And again, trying to work evenly throughout the piece, having p it, it distributed throughout the piece from top to bottom, from side to side. So I've pulled some of my favorite pieces and made sure that they were closer to the top so that they could be seen a little bit more. And this is just cut out pieces from an actual piece. So it's a good way to use things that maybe you don't like the whole piece of art um, and you can just cut pieces that you really like. That piece 
there, the paper that I put down is actually from my inspiration page. It's a picture of vintage typewriter keys, but it's got that deep um, emerald green teal color. So I grabbed this piece of jelly plate print on deli paper and I'm placing that I'm now beginning to kind of feel the, the piece and have some composition and know where my words are going to go. And so I'm using that lighter piece um, as the place where I can place my words and have that drop be the drawing point to my focal point. I've mixed some gesso and some modeling paste together and I am using, this is the Damask Duo stencil and just this, this brings the piece together. It helps um, it feel completed and not like it's just a bunch of papers stuck down to the piece. It's a re reoccurring pattern um, and so it also is contrast and it's light and dark and lights and darks always um, bring things together. I've mixed up some raw um, or not raw umber but burnt umber and glazing medium and I'm just I'm not being real heavy with the glazing medium going around the outside of the piece and then gently over some of the other parts the the, um, the stenciled images and that kind of thing um, just to give it that to warm it up a little bit and and to kind of push everything together So this is, we're doing the dance now. So I warm it up and now I'm gonna cool it down <laughs> with my white. But I wanted, I really wanted that to be white and I'm gonna whiten up the stenciled area too by pulling it, pulling the glaze back with the, with alcohol. And so I really wanted that to match and I really wanted that, I wanted the, the highlight of the wash, the glaze and the gesso, the, the warm and the cool together. All of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box, um, including all the stencils and all the products that I used. And now I'm just bringing back some of that color that I maybe have pushed away with that with the gesso. Um, again, it's a dance. It's just kind of back and forth until it feels right, till the colors feel okay. Adding just a pop of quinacridone magenta there was some in that palette paper and I loved it and I just wanted a tiny bit more for variety and interest and it was perfect we're almost done now I'm just pulling back I've got some alcohol on my rag and I'm just pulling back some paint I'm just kind of making it light and grungy and sketchy and I'm pulling back some of that glaze off of 
<clears throat> those images, um, the stenciled um, images, just to lighten it up a little bit. I'll put down my words and then add some shading with a soft pastel. And that is it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, subscribe and like and all of those wonderful things so that you never miss a video. Stick around for the conversation at the end. Um, it's a good one. I do talk a little bit more about my process and then I share about my inspiration. And um, I hope that you have a wonderful Sunday and I will see you next week. All right, loves, the hair she is. I did a, a pretty good job of capturing that color that was my inspiration from the beginning. Um, using up my papers, uh, that is one of my favorite, favorite things to do. <clears throat> and I'm, I know that someone will ask, so I'll just explain it. Um, I always get asked, why do you put the papers down if you're just going to cover it up? Um, and I do that for a couple of reasons because um, one it adds all of this gorgeous gorgeous texture not only the layers on top but the layers on bottom it all adds this magic um, mystery people want to know how I got the texture where you know how, all of those kinds of things it creates unexpected lines um, it just adds so much interest to the piece um, and the other reason that um, I put the papers down is because there are these little bits that show up in certain spots. I've got this one single line right here that's got a bunch of numbers on it. I've got these dashed lines over here that happen to show up. I've got little simple words here from the child's book. This postcard and the postcard stamp right here. Um, all of those little bits, the numbers down here, all those little bits show up and create the interest and the depth and um, the character of the piece. Um, and, and then all the thicker pieces, just it just magnifies all of the grungy texture goodness. Um, so that's why I put the papers down only to cover them up. And the other, and I will say this, there's <clears throat> another reason why I put the papers down. Because the papers inspire the next move. So I put the initial papers down in a certain pattern and I do every single layer as if it were the only layer. And then I start layering on top. And you, I, you always have to be willing to let go of the next layer or the last layer to make the next layer look good. So I loved this piece right here from the one of the pieces that I did. I just cut a section out of it. Loved it. But I knew that I needed to add more um, vertical up here and I didn't want to take away from this and I struggled with a little bit um, with that and I I always have to say you have to make this layer look um, right and let go of the other layers and every time I do that all of the unexpected goodness still shows up in some way form it's always there and it always always adds so much to the piece um, so that's why I layer um, I'm telling a story I'm creating texture um, I'm being inspired from that layer for the next layer. Um, all of the colors of papers that I put down, all of the grungy stuff, all of the tissue paper that may not even be showing up right now, inspired. So when I put a, a certain paper down or a certain color down, I think, ooh, maybe I need more of that. So then I can do, then I, that took me to the place where I did the glaze around the outside or the white maybe I need more of that white so I you know stenciled the images that kind of thing um, 
all of that, every single step, encourages the next step. So um, don't be afraid to let go of the background. Don't be afraid to put the papers down in the backgrounds because a lot of times people say it's a waste. But it's not a waste because you're creating this one-of-a-kind masterpiece that has all of these intricate spots and pieces. And every time someone looks at a piece, they see something new. And that's what art's about. That's, that's, that's the best thing when, someone, when two people can look at the same piece and notice something different in the same piece. It's magic simply magic. So not a lot of color in this piece that I used. Lots of color from the papers, but I only used these three colors. Um, quinacridone gold, the turquoise thalo, and the um, thalo green. And um, I just positively love it. I added that little bit of pop of red in there to just give it some oomph. Um, for, for me, I love, these are my two favorite colors. This is the color of my entire house. Um, so it was perfect. Okay, so I went over everything else throughout the video. So this says, and this is one of my favorite quotes. It sits on my, um, on my bulletin board above my desk. And it says, live simply, dream big, be grateful, live love, laugh lots. And sometimes we think that um, we think that there has to be some like serious deep level of living and and believe me I'm all about growing and learning and getting wiser and I take a lot of courses and I get therapy and I do all of those kinds of things but sometimes it's just really simple and these these five are like a pillar of life for me so living simply for me, just simply means um, being okay with what you have. That's not to say that um, I'm not striving to have something different or more or anything like that, but um, being okay with what you have and that sometimes less is more. And um, I know it's certainly that for art. Um, and it's certainly that in so many aspects of our lives. When we can simplify, um, we can amplify. When we simplify, we get clarity. Um, you know, when we are organized and we can weed out stuff in our closets or our offices or different things like that, suddenly there's this freedom. And so living simply just means being... Um, okay with what you have and and really um, organizing for a lack of better words what you have so simplify to clarify and then dream big um, our dreams are what kind of are I, they're like what gets us up in the morning and I used to say my kids are why I got up in the morning but that's because I had big dreams for them I had big dreams for our lives together and so um, when we live simply and we hold on to our dreams and we dream big, I mean like fantastic, big dreams, um, that keeps us going. When, when people let their dreams die, it's a really sad place because you can see it. Um, it's a sense of sadness. And so live simply, dream big, and then be grateful. These two go hand in hand in my book. Live simply, be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. Maybe it's not a lot. Maybe it's um, maybe you're striving for more. But until we are grateful for what we have right now, I just don't believe that we'll be given more. That we can handle more. If we're not grateful for what we have, how can we be great? Be grateful for anything more? And then live love. Uh, I mean, this one is like my everyday thought is to live how can I live love more how can I love on my people around me more how can I love on my kids and and how can I love on this community how can I live love and that's by serving to me that means serving in all kinds of capacities serving can be just pausing to take a moment and ask somebody how they are how they're doing how you know how can I help you in whatever you're in 
whatever moment you're in. Living love means celebrating with others. Living love means giving up on jealousy and judgment and loving someone for who they are in the place that they are. And um, it's hard. All of these are really, I mean, it's easy and hard. Um, but live love. When we can love on others, um, it changes us from the inside. And so, simple, simple um, mantra. All of these are simple mantras, but make big, big differences in our lives. And then laugh lots. They say laughter is, the, is medicine, and it really honestly is. I mean, the, the research shows that the more you laugh, the more it lowers your blood pressure, the more you, it lowers your anxiety. Um, and the, the sad part about that is sometimes we are so isolated in our worlds that um, we aren't surrounding ourselves with people who know us and love us and can laugh with us and in all kinds of situations and um, I I've recently had friends in I've had my son in and man have we laughed we have laughed hard we have cried hard we have loved each other lots we have been grateful for the time we are together we dreamed big together and um, we were just simply happy to be in the moment and so all of these work together in my life um, so often and um, maybe I'm not doing great at any of them in one day or all of them in one day but I am focused on being grateful or I'm focused on loving or I'm focused on just enjoying the moment and laughing I'm a very very serious person and so it's hard sometimes for me to just set things aside and just be silly and um, I need that and so I need to surround myself with people who do that my husband is one of those people he makes me laugh every single day um, so I, I, this quote has spoken to me for many years of sitting on my desk and I'm like that is perfect perfect for right now in the season we're headed into the holiday season and I know it is hard 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 for everyone for everyone um, even if family situations are good um, there's still stress involved there's a lot of personalities that come together there's a lot of cooking or gift giving or all of those things that happen during this time and it can be very stressful and there can be a lot of anxiety and I think if we can remember just these simple things just to be okay with less to, to hold on to our dreams of whatever it is to be grateful for what we've got right now in this moment and to look to how we can love others and to laugh a lot laugh at ourselves I mean laugh with others just let's not take everything so seriously and be able to let things go and I should say and I'm saying me I need to <laughs> I need to um, but I I needed this message and I always seem to when I need the message and I put it out there somebody else sends me an email and says man I needed that today so that is my Sunday inspiration for you today, my loves. I hope your Sunday is awesome. You will see this as you head into here in the U.S. Thanksgiving weekend. And I know that, again, the holidays are hard and sometimes um, it can be lonely. And I, I send up a prayer for all of you who are um, feeling lonesome or lost or all of those kinds of things during this holiday season. I've been there. I've spent a lot of them by myself. And um, I know what it feels like, but you can create your own, your own um, family, your own party, your own experience as you want it. I know that I did. I've invited everyone over that didn't have a place to go, didn't know some, knew some, and create started a, a tradition and um, created a family that way. And so. I just want you to know that I know um, the feeling and I know how hard the holidays can be and my thoughts and my prayers are with you. And if you are blessed to have 
a wonderful family. Oh man, how, how awesome for you and how amazing that you get to celebrate that. And um, I'm so grateful for that for you. So my loves, have a wonderful Sunday. Have a wonderful and joyful Thanksgiving um, if you celebrate it. And I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.